I'm John and she's Kate and this is Plus 8 on Block. If you can leave a like on the video below and also comment with your thoughts, it helps out what we're doing tremendously and we love to see the discussions in the comments. So we've got some new information for when we'll likely see Akuma and potentially season two of Street Fighter VI with the evidence heavily pointing towards the end of May. Uh, we know that the Capcom Pro Tour will kick off in June of 2024, just a, a few months away here, and that characters must be out for a full week, that seven days before they are tournament eligible for the CPT. Also, Akuma is going to be playable in a real life battle hub in Japan during that first week of May. That's going to be May 1st through the 6th. So let's be very clear, he is right around the corner if they are going to be making him available to the public and you better believe there's going to be a gameplay video because they're not going to want somebody to leak out some gameplay of that there so akuma is going to be expected to be released with the season two balance changes as capcom often rolls out these types of major updates together Yes, and he's also likely going to be coupled with a fighting pass too, and a design change for the battle hub, which you and I both love, uh, we play in there a lot. Um, when that was previously uh, the case, that happened with Rashid, Aki, and Ed. Those characters were made live about 20 to 26 days after their fighting passes were made available. And if Akuma follows suit here, it's very likely that are going to see him released near the end of May on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. So it's looking likely that we're going to see Akuma on May 27th through the 29th. That is a mo Ooh. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> get hype about it or if you don't play akuma uh, maybe not so hype about it because he can be a controversial character for a lot of people um, but we're also expecting that the battle changes to come up with that um, so if you know even if you don't want to play akuma like your character is probably going to get some tweaks in that that update but kate i want to go back to akuma here what do you remember about him being released in street fighter 5 and the impact that that made Oh my goodness, uh, everybody was very, very excited to have Akuma join the cast of Street Fighter V, and he was the uh, first of the second season DLC, which was released around December 20th time, back in 2016, for five. that is. Very strong character historically, sometimes considered a banned character, but uh, in Street Fighter V, definitely held his own. A little bit of a glass jaw, but that's okay. He was played a lot by Takedo and Takamura. And uh, both of those players, as of right now, for Street Fighter VI are using Ken. What I'm thinking is, depending on how they balanced Ryu when he was initially put into the game, and now how he's stronger, I feel that since Ryu hits like a tank and Akuma's supposed to hit harder, Akuma may have some better damage, but uh, just the same as some previous versions may, you know, receive more damage in the long run too. Yeah. So, and um, he's going to have additional um, special moves and options because Akuma always comes in juggling 10 million different things. So oh, yeah. I can't wait to see what they're going to be having Akuma contain. Yeah, and, and as we previously discussed, Akuma is becoming more like Oni, and it's possible yes. his health may not be as reduced as, as before, and he might even pick up a move or two from Oni in this right. new game. And so it could be really interesting what they do. Um, he's getting stronger, more powerful, all this other kind of stuff, but we did a whole video on that. Yes. Um, and, and as you mentioned, it's going to be really interesting to see what to see which pros switch over from like Luke and Ken over mm -hmm. to Akuma now, and potentially Ryu if they do a little bit more to, to buff him even further, which is definitely possible. Right. So. All right, moving on now, I want to talk about the Season 2 balance changes. We're anticipating that the developers might incorporate some big damage adjustments to the game. Uh, the developers of Street Fighter regularly adjust the damage that the characters do in the franchise, oftentimes near the first major balance patch that is released. And that is coming up here with Season 2, um, although it can be, uh, come up later in the pipeline as well. Looking back from the history of the franchise, this has been happening regularly since Street Fighter 4 era, where... A little over a year after that game has been released on the consoles, Capcom heavily nerfs a lot of the cast's ability to do damage with the Ultras. So it's a blanketed nerf across the cast. From the vanilla release of uh, Street Fighter 4 to Super, characters lost from 5 to 15% of the damage on their Ultras and some of their other moves. Similarly, two years after Street Fighter V was released, Capcom applied a universal damage nerf of 10% on all combos. 
that involved a V-trigger activation, which was one of the main ways of dealing damage and one of the most popular tactics to use throughout that game's lifespan. Yeah, because of that history, that is... The amount of complaints that we're seeing about Drive Rush, uh, I think there's a very strong possibility that Capcom will look to decrease the damage dealt with Drive Rush in, in Season 2 of Street Fighter VI. Right. And this is traditionally done by increasing the damage scaling, as you cited there. Um, in other words, when you do an attack, uh, instead of doing 100% of the damage it normally does, um, it would be scaled down to 90%, so a 10% damage nerf. That's where we get these numbers from. That's often how Capcom adjusts stuff in this modern era. And I think Capcom is going to look at two specific things in Street Fighter VI, raw Drive Rush and neutral, and then level three. Uh, there have been quite a few proposals to reduce the effectiveness of Drive Rush in neutral by giving it punish counter status right now um, and only gives counter hit status when you have that happen. Um, and giving a punish counter on that would, would give people a plus four instead of plus two um, on hit and then also reduce um, uh, the opponent's uh, gauge, drive gauge, and then give the person who's getting the punish counter drive gauge as well. Raw Drive Rush in the neutral state has a 15% multiplier damage scale on it. And I can see this increasing to 20 to 25% in season two, basically making the combos that start in this fashion doing about five to 10% less damage. Level threes are often the deciding factor in rounds with the way the game is being played currently. People tend to clam up a bit once the level 3s are available because of the extremely high damage. Where you're seeing pro players drain 65-70% to 70 of an opponent's life bar with these. That's a tremendous amount of damage to deal with a single combo. There are multiple other benefits to the level 3s, like draining about a bar and a half of drive gauge and allowing you to recover your own drive gauge while the animation is playing out. So I really wonder if the damage will be adjusted on these to maybe about 5% less overall. As it is, level 3s have a 10% immediate damage scaling property. So I could see this going up to about 15 or even 20%. Yeah, that's really interesting because level 3s are just such a... a heavy factor as you said um in, in the meta of the game right now and, and i know you've you've talked about this on your own where you feel like you get a level three and like you have to land it and and it becomes such a a, a big factor of how you play and you can really see this at the pro level that 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 everyone just really starts to clam up and, and have difficulty like uh approaching stuff in neutral because they're just afraid that they're going to hit you know like that solo of like stray hit and then they're going to lose 60 or 70 percent of their health like the, the whole game changes when these level threes are coming up and i i really am starting to wonder if they're just a little bit too powerful and i think that capcom might recognize that as well because it's so common for that that um in the fighting game community that you know the developers know some of the combos they know some of the setups but, but but when it gets in the hands of the players, the players discover even more stuff. The developers are like, oh, we didn't even realize that we're, you're, one, the community was going to play it that way, right. and two, they had this damaging of setups before. Like, it, it can really change the game once it gets out there in the public's hands. So while we're discussing universal changes, um, it's a lot that the cast members who weren't touched heavily by the Ed Balance update are going to get some adjustments as well. So individual changes are also going to be coming into the fold for these cast members, but we have a whole video on that you can check out uh, on who we think is going to get nerfed or buffed. Um, and stuff like that but it's normal for players to get better and perform these longer and more damaging combos and so I, i'm just wondering if the developers may feel like they they have to step in and just adjust a, a number of the attacks on an individual level not just a universal level for these yes. characters and get in there how do you feel about that kate uh, me personally i absolutely believe that because sometimes it is those micro adjustments that really go the distance instead of blanketed adjustments it's about trying to get specific parts of each character in the cast to flow cohesively. And if you're able to do that and try to get the cast to buff uh, and be relatively on the same level together, it's going to bring so much more to the game, including high tournament placing, more variety along the way. So I think that's really something... Um, you know, something very cool and important to take a look at. And some of the ideas on how to get input back on this can be from, you know, um, social media, pro players, character loyalists. I mean, in addition to 
testers and statistics and things like that. So there's tons and tons of different options of ways to um, research how to buff or nerf uh, specific parts of the cast. Yeah, and, and this has happened, like these damage nerfs, uh, at, like the prior two games, Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5, mm -hmm. they got significant damage adjustments to these games. And that's how come we think that Street Fighter 6 going into Season 2, there's a really good chance that we see some pretty heavy changes here, um, again, potentially to Drive Rush into level 3s. But please let us know what you think of this in the comments below. Get the discussion going. We're always happy to, to see the discussion down there. It's what it's for. And we hope you guys are enjoying this, and we will be back with you soon.